Let's dive right in. Polls open in less than an hour in Georgia, where one of the most consequential primaries of the midterms is taking place. There are several state and congressional races on the ballot, but the ones we're closely watching are the Republican primaries for governor, secretary of state, and Senate. The New York Times describes the background of today's races like this, quote, Georgia's got everything, disputed elections, rapid demographic change, celebrity Democrats, a restrictive new voting law, an open criminal investigation into Donald Trump's meddling in the 2020 election, a deep rural urban divide, an unending drama between the Trump wing of the Republican Party and the local GOP establishment. That's a lot. Former Senator David Perdue, whose loss in the state two years ago helped give Democrats control of Congress, is running to unseat incumbent Governor Brian Kemp. Perdue was recruited by former President Donald Trump to run against Kemp as payback for Kemp's refusal to overturn the 2020 election results, thus cheating in the election. But recent polling shows Perdue is trailing badly so far, Willie. And arguably as important in the state of Georgia as those is the race for Secretary of State. Incumbent Brad Raffensperger, another of President Trump's major targets after the last election, of course. He's facing Congressman Jody Heiss, who voted against certifying the election results on January 6th. And he backs the big lie. Also, Trump-backed Republican Senate candidate Herschel Walker, the football star in that state, is likely to win easily his party's nomination to face incumbent Raphael Warnock in November. Meanwhile, Donald Trump and his former number two, Mike Pence, campaigned on competing sides in Georgia yesterday. Pence holding a rally at an airport for incumbent Governor Brian Kemp, while Trump called in to a tele-rally for former Senator David Perdue. Didn't make the trip up because Kemp refused to go along with Trump's big lie. The former president awful calls him the, quote, the worst election integrity governor in the country. Contrast that with Pence, who yesterday called Governor Kemp one of the most successful Republican governors in the country. I'm here because Brian Kemp is the only candidate in tomorrow's primary who has already defeated Stacey Abrams, whether she knows it or not. I know, I can read the newspaper. I know the polls look good, real good. <laughs> But don't let up. Don't slow down. Keep chopping. The latest Fox News poll has Governor Kemp leading Trump's handpicked candidate, David Perdue, by 32 points. The Real Clear Politics average of polls has Kemp up 22 points. Calling into a radio show yesterday, Trump dismissed the polls and said he expects a surprise. They tried to put out some fake news about. Uh, me sort of losing faith in David. And I'll tell you what, if you know David, you don't lose faith in him. I think a big, big surprise is going to be tomorrow because I think David Perdue, I, I, I hear it's like record, record turnout. They've never seen anything like it. The big news is, though, that poll, and I hear another one came out, it's much closer than the fake news wants you to believe. You know, they had me way down a couple of times now in two elections, way down in certain areas, and I ended up winning them by a lot. And it's called depression polling. And I really think that maybe is what they did here. I think it is what they did. I think it's going to be a very interesting race. And if it does get into a runoff, David Perdue is your next governor. Joe, Donald Trump playing the hits there, talking about the polls being yeah. suppressed, about the fake news, and also saying he supports David Perdue very strongly, except he couldn't make the trip from Florida to Georgia to support him yesterday at that rally he called in. Um, but fascinating, yeah. isn't it, to watch his vice president on the opposite side of this race? It is. And, and one of the things that Trump said, that just I won by a lot. The guy never won by a lot. He lost the popular vote two times, squeaked by one time, and uh, lost... Uh, lost, of course, in 2020 and still just can't get over it. Uh, but, yeah, it is fascinating to see uh, Mike Pence going out there. Obviously, we're starting to see more and more of this where, where people who were afraid of their own shadows a couple of years ago all across the Republican Party are now speaking up, uh, standing up to Donald Trump. And, and it's quite fascinating. And those who are still defending him, John Heilman, seem to be 
going all in with Trumpism, uh, seem to be looking backwards, looking back to 2020, and even using some of the tactics of 2020. Uh, David Perdue yesterday using the fascist, uh, talking about greatest hits, using greatest hits from, from fascist uh, politicians, told Stacey Abrams to go back to where no, she came from. No, no. Uh, yes, he did. Go back to where mm -hmm. she came from, uh, a, a, a clear hallmark of what fascists from uh, Mussolini forward have always done. Of course, I don't think he realizes she's from the land of cheese, the land of Jim Van Dyke, Wisconsin. But uh, that's not exactly what he was meaning. So again, it, it's desperate, uh, it's ugly, uh, and it's everything that you would expect from a Trump candidate. Yes, and I would add, uh, you know, she's lived in Georgia since she was in high school, I believe, so I'm, you know. Yeah, this uh, is really painful. And the other elements of that, uh, Joe, I know you, you noted, not just fascist, but also racist, he decided to, because she had said over the weekend that, uh, that, that people shouldn't have to work, uh, that, that African-Americans shouldn't have to work in, the, uh, in agriculture and hospitality to have a job in Georgia, and he said, you know, he, attacked, uh, he decided to attack her, saying in some twisted sense of logic that she was somehow demeaning her own race. I mean, the notion that David Perdue should have anything to say to Stacey Abrams about how she decides to talk about her own race is itself uh, just a, like, it's not even a dog whistle, it's like, you know, a, a, a blaring air horn. Um, and look, I mean, Joe, I think, you know, the, there's a number of things to say here. David Perdue is about to be humiliated in this race, and, 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 uh, and so is Donald Trump. And, you know, we were having a debate here on set. Mika, do you think Joe, do you think, uh, do you think Trump was in bed when he made that phone call or um, in the bathtub? Which uh, one? Maybe your... uh, in a chair, robe, getting a petty. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, yeah, 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 but yeah you, you know, the problem, though, John, is it's not just Georgia. And candidates all over, Republicans are going to see this. We've seen what's already happened in Nebraska, where Trump was humiliated in Nebraska. We saw what happened in Idaho when he went all in with a, a radical right-wing uh, lieutenant governor who lost. We saw what happened in Pennsylvania. Two-thirds of Pennsylvania Republican voters voted against Trump's hand-picked candidate. And now you just go one state over, a state that he says is one of his best states, Alabama, one of his most loyal right. states. Mo Brooks with Trump's endorsement dead in the water. Mm. Trump withdraws his endorsement, and one poll that I just saw has him within the margin of error. Right. He could come back and win this race. Well, right, and you think about, I mean, <laughs> the value, like, just think about if you're a candidate at this point, Joe, it, it, forget about Trump's power or sway within the party. Just think about what it means to be endorsed by Donald Trump at this point. You know, if you're, if you look at these two races of Purdue and, and, and Mo Brooks, it's like, you know, in, 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 this is something that's been kind of obvious to anybody who's paid attention to Trump over the course of his public life, but his loyalty extends uh, about as far as his personal self-interest extends. So as Mosey, he, he starts to see someone who he's given a, uh, an endorsement to, uh, he starts to see that person be in trouble in some way, and he will either withdraw the endorsement officially, as in the case of Mo Brooks, or with David Perdue, where suddenly, in the state that Trump has cared more about than any other state, symbolically, and in fact, for the purposes of 2024, Georgia could again be a crucial state, uh, likely to be a crucial state in the presidential election. He just saw David Perdue losing, Make, make clear that he, yes, he would make the phone call from the bathtub, or from the pet, or from <laughs> oh, the petty, or from the petty okay. chair, or wherever it was. But he's not going to go to the state in the That's end. Right. As soon as the polls are clear, uh, it's like, yeah, well, uh, uh, David Purdue. By tomorrow, Trump will be saying, David Purdue. Barely met him. Hardly ne know him. Never who are you talking about? Who Never. Are you uh, who talking is David about? Purdue again? That's what we're going to hear tomorrow. <laughs>